Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Hena Khan and today I'm presenting a bone that is present behind the maxilla and is involved in the formation of the hard palate, the nasal cavity and the floor of the orbit. In many animal species, it is located above the uvula in the throat. I know you guys are very genius and from the word palate, you must have guessed that we're talking about the palatine bone today. The palatine bone, or in Latin, os platinum, is a paired, flat, irregular facial bone, as you can see here. Before proceeding ahead, let's have a review of all the views of the palatine bone. It will help you understand every aspect easily. Anterior and posterior are placed side by side for better understanding. Then we have a bottom or inferior view. And lastly, a similar one, which is the lateral and the medial view. As you can better understand now that medial means towards the body and lateral means away from the body. You must be wondering where the word palatine came from. So let me tell you the word palatine refers to the Palatine Hills in Rome, which is one of the seven important hills in Rome. Because the curved appearance of the palate is resembling the Palatine Hill closely. When the skull is viewed in the anterior aspect, the palatine bone appears as this. Then we have the inferior or the ventral view. And lastly, the mid-sagittal view of the skull. As you can see, the palatine bones are all colored in purple. Now coming towards its features. Remember, the palatine bone is composed of two plates. First of all, the horizontal plate and then we have the perpendicular plate, which are connected to form this characteristic L shape, as you can appreciate well over here. Now, this bone features three processes, the pyramidal, orbital and sphenoidal. The palatine bone help house the primary pain signaling pathways for the mouth and the teeth. As they house the greater palatine foramina, which are the openings that allow the palatine nerves to pass through. The palatine bone articulates with five bones. Maxilla, sphenoid, ethmoid, inferior nasal concha, and womer. Primarily, the palatine bone serves as a structural function with its shape helping carve out important structures within the head and defining the lower wall of the inside of the cranium. The palatine bone's horizontal plate is just behind the maxilla bone while lying in front of the soft palate, which we know is the soft tissue at the roof of the mouth. The end of this bone perpendicular plate closest to the back of the head articulates with the pterygoid process of the sphenoid bone. As you can appreciate over here, this yellow colored bone is basically the sphenoid bone. So we can say that the palatine bones are situated at the back of the nasal cavity between the maxilla and the pterygoid process of the sphenoid bone, as you can see over here. On the upper border, this bone helps form the base of the orbital process, which we will discuss further on. Now, keeping in view the location, palatine bones contributes to the walls of three cavities. First of all, the roof of the mouth, the floor and the lateral walls of the nasal cavity, as you can appreciate over here and then the floor of the orbits or the eye sockets. The roof of the oral cavity and the floor of the nasal cavity together makes up the palate 
which is going to separate the oral and the nasal cavities. Now, talking about the palate, we have two types of palates. First of all, the hot palate, which is present anteriorly, known as the palatum dorum, and the soft palate, known as the palatum molle, forms the posterior part. Hot palate is immobile. Its rostral part or anterior aspect consists of the palatine process of the maxilla and the horizontal plate of the palatine bone is in its posterior aspect together comprising of the heart palate. The basic function of the heart palate is contributing to the phonation of the consonants while we are talking and serves as a support for the tongue when crushing the food. On the other hand, the soft palate is positioned posteriorly and it's quite flexible. It helps in swallowing and it comprises of muscle fibers covered by a mucous membrane. Now, as we have discussed the location and the positioning of the palatine bone, let's discuss the palatine sutures that are present in close vicinity of the palatine bone. The palatine bone consists of three types of sutures. Interpalatine suture, then we have a median palatine suture, and we have a transverse palatine suture. The horizontal plate of the palatine bone is connected in the midline by the interpalatine suture. The median palatine suture connects the horizontal plates of the palatine. It is post the posterior continuation of the intermaxillary suture, which is also known as the median palatine suture, highlighted in green over here. If you see dorsally, the transverse palatine suture, also known as the palatomaxillary suture, adheres the palatine processes of the maxillary bone to the palatine bone on the posterior aspect. As you can see over here, we have this interpalatine suture, which is the continuation of the intermaxillary suture. The two horizontal plates articulate with each other at the posterior aspect of the median palatine suture and more anteriorly with the maxilla at the transverse palatine suture. Moreover, the palatine bone contributes to the skeletal framework of the inferior orbital fissure, pterygo palatine with the sphenoidal bone, and the pterygoid fossa. As this bone is a part of the nasal septum, our friend Max has another cool mnemonic for all of you for a better memorization. Peter nose starts flowing vigorously every morning. Where? P stands for palatine bones. N stands for nasal bones. S stands for sphenoid bone. F stands for frontal bone. V stands for vomer. E stands for ethmoid. And lastly, M stands for maxilla. So this is how you can memorize the bones involved in the formation of nasal septum. I hope until now you guys are having a clear image about the articulation, location, and functions of the palatine bone. So let's move forward towards the anatomical landmarks.